time we're looking at the difference between plastic guards, which are solid tubes made of corex, and perforated guards. We're going to be taking this guard off. I put it on earlier because I just didn't have the perforated guards available. Um, the supplier was delayed. So we'll take this guard off, and you often have to take guards off, um, or you take the mesh off. That's quite average, so we'll take this off first and just undo the wires. Lift this off, put all the wire on the ground together so we can see exactly where it is. We take this guard off, keep everything together. When you lift this off, lift it off very carefully to avoid damaging the young tree. And you can see the effect of the guard. It's already brought the tree into leaf, which is a good thing provided there's no frost. Now, if we just have a look at the difference between the two guards. We've got the plastic Corex guard, which I have used in the past. They're good for a few months. They keep the moisture in, they're opaque, they let sunlight through. They definitely help when it's dry weather. But the big problem with them is they store too much humidity around the tree. And what that leads to is a buildup of moisture on the stems, which tends to bring in bugs, particularly woolly aphid, which we've had, and even canker. And long term, the grass grows up the middle of it and you end up with a grass-filled tube, which does not suit the tree. These guards are much better. They're aerated, they allow the wind through, they harden the growth up, and they prevent the whole thing steaming up and getting too hot. So I much prefer them. And I'm gonna concentrate on putting these in today. So if you look carefully, you can see the Volgaard's gone in, we put that in the other week, that's gone round, I've got to push it in a little bit, and then this guard goes on this way up, and you'll see how I put it on, around the tree gently, I run my hands up, make sure you've got gloves on, because this plastic can cut you, snaps round like that, and sits very tight, which is fine. I'll take one of these pieces of plastic. I'll need to cut some more. I'll put it round, put it through, and pull it tight. Make sure you position the guard upright. This is a good time to make sure everything sits in there. Twiddle it on, turn it downwards, and just check that you haven't snagged any part of the tree inside the guard. It's tight all the way down, level on the ground. It doesn't need a tree tie because it's too short. I can then put this guard back on because as you can see, I left this wire on, which is very important. Much easier, if you're on your own, to put it back on. It goes round the tree, position it so that the join between the ends is there. And the important thing is to put the wire on at the top first. And if you remember, I showed you before to curve this in a particular way. And that's the way you want to do it. Make a kind of seahorse shape. You can see that. And then approach in from this side. It's much easier. And hook it round. Bring it through. And your guard goes through quite straightforwardly like that. Let's put the middle one in through here and then we've held it fast against any movement by the wind or animals and then there's one more little job to do with this tree before we come back later and we look at labeling what i've got here is some garlic and if you're interested in the history of fruit growing you'd read the georgics by Virgil, who was a, a Roman writer, and his book is well documented as being a record of how farming was done in Roman times. So they talk about using garlic um, under fruit trees, under plants generally, and it's well regarded. It's full of allicins, which are a high sulfur containing um, sort of product, and what it tends to do is give the tree some kind of protection from pests and diseases. So I'm just pushing that in under the tree, a very casual kind of way because I know 
from looking around the trees here, even though we've got the sheep in the orchard, this particular group do not eat the garlic. Ideally, I push it under the, the mesh, but even if it just sits near the tree, it will spread, form colonies, and eventually become quite a presence under the trees. And it's one of the things I use to naturally deter voles, of course, but also protect the trees against aphids and fungal diseases like scab, canker, and powdery mildew. All of them difficult to control. So this is a natural um, kind of remedy, which is well used in the past. Now that we've tied up everything and finished that part of the job, we've got one more piece of work to do. These are the labels. Now it's very important that you label individual trees. Much of the orchard is individual trees and I use a label system which is fairly reliable. This is an aluminium plate and it's about three mil thick. It's varying in length. I've got lots of different lengths. I make these really by cutting up aluminium and then drilling either end and then I paint on the name in an enamel paint. The, the paint I use is black hammerite you might find something very similar in your DIY store. If you're not confident cutting aluminium, get it cut for, for you by a metal shop or a supplier. A lot of suppliers will cut it for you and drill it for a price. Um, if you are confident, then you can do it yourself. But always be very careful because cutting metal is, is dangerous. Um, so we're going to put this metal onto the plant and this will identify the plant for us in the future. So that when we're walking around the orchard, we can find where things are very, very quickly. And you can see these labels in low light. So if you're in a, in a low light environment, it's gonna make your life a lot easier um, as you often are working against the clock. So I just loop the wire through, tie it on. I tend to put the labels of plants out of direct sunlight because they last a lot longer. This is pretty long lasting um, and I just hang them on the wire like that. They live there and they give me quite a long uh, period of use, many years period of use and it means that I can then um, recognize the tree very quickly. This is Hughes crab, which is a very good heritage variety from the US. It's unique to the US, makes the most fantastic cider, um, very popular in the past. We'll talk about Hughes crab again in the future. So we've now completed this tree. It's ready for um, growing. I'm checking it out. We planted the garlic underneath and that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please join us again soon. Watch out for more videos coming your way. If you want to see more, please subscribe and catch up with us soon. Thank you.